I could be reaching, but maybe this move will finally get Apple to bring ProRes RAW to Resolve. What's going on guys, I'm Yashai, this is Fireface Films, and today we're talking about how Sony and Blackmagic have shook hands and are bringing B-RAW to the FX6 and FX9. But before we do, make sure you drop a like, get subscribed, and click that bell to get notified when you post. All right, on with the show. So, in a surprising move, Sony and Blackmagic have really shook hands, and I, I can't believe B-RAW is coming to the FX6 and the FX9. This is really surprising. Like, I didn't see this coming. Um, for years, as we all know, if you want to do RAW on those cameras, you'd have to use the Atomos family of recorders and only be able to do ProRes RAW. Yuck. Yikes. I think it's a very fair choice to start the implementation with these two cameras. Well, more the FX6 and the FX9, we'll get to that. So, in the case of the FX6, we're going to be getting that 4K sensor, we're going to have RAW recording, and it's going to be, it remains to be seen what formats we're getting. So far, there was only like a closed demo at IBC, and uh, we don't really have much in the way of specs or info on it quite yet. But it will be nice, as it's going to be coming from the SDI port, as opposed to HDMI in most cases, and that's good. But then, on the flip side, if you're talking about the FX9, I don't really know or I don't really know if it's gonna be worth it because you gotta think about this. The FX9 is a $10,000 camera and then you'd have to add on the XDCA, which is another 2,500 and a video assist, which at minimum is gonna be $500. 500, 350, one of those two, but you know what I mean. So you're adding it about $3,000 to an already $10,000 camera to get raw recording, which uh, given the FX9's use cases, mostly is a more broadcast camera, and I know it obviously can be used in certain applications, but the primary function, seeing as it is like a legacy broadcast camera and has those kind of formats, that'd be one of its first priorities, if I'm not mistaken. So, adding another $3,000 to the cost of the FX9 to get raw recording might be, I don't know, it might be an odd choice, but it at least opens the door, because as a lot of other people kind of talked about, there's the possibility of the FX3 and FX30 getting a raw recording with the video assist, which if that happens, that would be actually fantastic as we'd finally get away from the more, I mean, in my opinion, processed, but definitely noise reduced images coming from those cameras as with the FX3 and FX30, you don't have control over the noise reduction like you do in the FX6 and probably FX9. If, if you underexpose with those cameras, if you manage to underexpose with those cameras, you're cooked if you have to raise those exposure levels back up. In the case of the FX3, we could see something along the lines of more uh, dynamic range. And I'm not talking about increasing how much the camera actually sees. No, if you actually look at the dynamic range chart here, you would see that the noise floor is super, super noise reduced and flat as opposed to being noisy, which means if you underexpose this image, when you raise those lower stops, there's nothing to raise out because it's already been noise reduced. So in the case of a raw image, we would get those lower stops back, increasing how much dynamic range we have on the lower end to noise reduce ourselves, which that's that's major, that's really major. You're gonna have a lot more options in post, which is the whole point of RAW, it's gonna be beautiful. I could be reaching, but maybe this move will finally get Apple to bring ProRes RAW to resolve. It's very clear that ProRes RAW, as a RAW format, in comparison to the rest, pales in comparison. It's super limited on what you can use as it's obviously only Final Cut. Adobe Premiere in some cases, I, I'm not familiar with it as I haven't used it, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. I'll uh, put a thing right here if that is the case. But as you have Sony's own proprietary RAW, but that's only gonna be on like the Burano, the Venice, those types of cameras. And then you have Red RAW, you have B RAW, you have N RAW, you have N RAW even. So you have all these other RAW formats that are compatible in Resolve and perhaps Premiere, but I'm speaking as a Resolve editor and colorist. And you have Pro Apple ProRes RAW just relegated to um, Final Cut. So maybe if we continue to see an expansion of B-RAW into other cameras from the source of external recording, maybe Apple will finally get it together and bring ProRes RAW into being used into Resolve. I mean, that would be, that would be a game changer. Mm, let's not say game changer. It would be major though as finally they've opened up that option. And obviously for us, that's good. That's really good because now we'd have that option because you're, you don't have to get relegated or pushed in a certain direction. So you can use what you want to get the results you want and edit in any program you want, which, you know, that's kind of, that's kind of the goal, right? <laughs> yeah, so all in all, I think this is a fantastic update. Fantastic. We don't know when this is coming, by the way. We don't know when this is coming. 
but ideally, I mean, sometime probably in the next year or so. I mean, they, they don't tip, Black Magic doesn't typically unveil things if it's not that much further around the corner, so we can see this fairly soon. And I'm excited. So guys, what camera do you think should get B-Raw next? A lot of cameras already have it. You have Panasonic, Fuji, Sigma, Leica, uh, even Z-Cam, and in the case of the C200, C300 Mark II, all of these cameras have B-RAW support. So what next? I mean, Nikon? They have NRAW, so probably not, and they're now affiliated with Nikon, so probably not, probably not Nikon. But what do you think, if you had a suggestion or what you'd want to see get B-RAW, what would it be? Drop it in the comments below. But that's going to be doing it for us today. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed what you saw here. And if, if you did, make sure you drop a like, get subscribed, and click that bell to get notified when we post. And stay tuned for more filmmaking content. Right now, I am being filmed, if you saw my post, on the DJI Focus Pro. I'm using a, a manual vintage lens here. It's, it doesn't want to focus, but manual vintage lens, auto-focusing. This thing is fantastic. Setup's a bit of a headache, but if you want to see more about it, get subscribed. We are going to be doing a lot of testing with it and a lot of talking about it. And even this guy right here, we're talking wireless technology, uh, Axon Cineview HE, my janky wireless monitor setup. But yeah, as always, lots of filmmaking content and tech coming your way. And we see you guys in the next one. Yeah.